Hey guys, how's it going? Mark here. Today I'm heading up to Madison to do a little hiking today. I'm heading up a trail called the Military Ridge Trail. And it starts in Madison, a little bit off south of the Beltline. Um, if you don't know what the Beltline is, that's like 12, 14, and 18. And it's kind of just like a, a four-lane system that goes around the southern and then around the uh, western part of Madison. But my trail uh, starts just a little south of the Beltline. Um, and then it kind of goes down and follows 18 a little bit when 18 actually uh, departs the Beltline. So I'm not going to do the whole 40 miles of the trail today. But I'm hoping to get uh, probably a good 10, maybe even up to 17 miles today. So we'll see what happens. I'm kind of hoping, I'm hoping to get into Mount Horeb is where I'm hoping to get into. But uh, we'll just have to wait and see how it goes. I've got nothing but food with me. So I'm going to have lunch on the trail. Hopefully I can find a, a nice spot to just sit down and, and have a break. I have no idea if there's benches and picnic tables and little gazebos and you know shelters and stuff like that i have no idea if this trail has it i didn't do that much research on it it does seem like it's following an old train line which around here that's a lot of what you're going to get you know if you're not walking around in a state park or something like that most of the trails are just old rail lines we actually have a um, rails to trails uh, organization here and they look for the old train lines and they try to turn them into hiking trails and I tell you they've been busy because there's a lot of them but I'm coming into Evansville right now so I'm still probably good uh, maybe 45 to an hour away from where I'm going to park and start my hike but I want to stop off and get some breakfast all right so I'll see you guys at the trailhead okay guys here we are we are at the trailhead i'm walking through an apartment's uh parking lot because my trailhead is right down here i parked on um gosh i can't remember the name of the road now <laughs> but uh and I actually i'm not starting on the actual um military ridge trail because it actually starts in an intersection of a trail that's down there it's a major intersection of trails. It's got the Badger State Trail, the Mad City Trail, or something like that. Okay, guys, so I've been walking on this little path for a little while now. I'm coming up to the Verlo Under Round, is what it's called. And it's a major intersection of uh, hiking and biking trails. And when I mean trails, I'm talking that. This is basically a paved sidewalk, okay? <laughs> okay, so here we are, actually entering Fitchburg. So, the Dolly Hub is down that direction. I want Military Ridge, so I go straight across. Okay, so this is what they call the underground, okay? There's actually a, a overpass up here it's a old train system i don't know if the rails are still there or not it might be just a walking trail but yeah you got multiple trails that meet up here so in fact yeah i think that's definitely a walking path because now that i see it it's got the uh the fencing all the way around it but it is an old rail system All right, and off we go. We are on the Military Ridge Trail. It started out um, just on the other side of those trees there is a little babbling brook. Lots of birds around here, lots and lots. They're just chirping all over the place. Down in the uh, drainage gully down here, there's a bunch of wildflowers. I don't know what they are. <laughs> you guys know me, I don't know my plants. I don't know jack shit about that. <laughs> Uh, the, uh, oh, <laughs> there's a little playground park up there. 
what I was going to say though is uh, the weather for today is just perfect. A clear blue sky. Um, temperatures are right around the low 60s, 62, 3, something like that. Winds are 5 mile an hour, gusting up to about 10. I mean, yeah, this is just going to be a really good day. <laughs> I think. I think the high is supposed to top out somewhere around, gosh, I think like 70 or something like that. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a nice day. Nice, easy walk. I think most of this is going to be paved. Um, I know it is through, through Madison. I think it is through Verona. I don't know what's going to happen once I get out town, well, outside of town. I don't know if it'll turn to gravel or what. But uh, as you can tell, I'm getting passed by bicycles all the time. This is a very well used trail. Ah, this is a pretty cool tunnel here, guys. That is really neat. Got some paintings up on the up on the ceiling here that's cool very nicely done now stuff like this I don't mind it's intentional so when people start painting on the walls all right coming up on uh, McKee Road this is a very major roadway but we got a nice bridge overpass to go on now, last time I was here those bridges weren't even constructed yet <laughs> there is a gas station just on the other side of the uh, of McKee Road down there so if you're needing water candy bar whatever bathroom there you go it's right over there McKee Road is back there a ways but now I'm sitting there walking next to wetlands this was all a big marsh that's been through here there's been some development so it kind of ponds up now it's not really you know muck and marsh now but this is going to be a prime spot for mosquitoes prime spot <laughs> Yes, I was smart. I actually brought my mosquito repellent and my hat has a bug net on it. So if the mosquitoes get really bad, I can put that net down. <laughs> my dad actually watched me do a video where I was just being inundated with mosquitoes and stating that if I stopped, they were just all over me and I was just getting exhausted trying to keep moving and keep the mosquitoes off of me. So this was my Christmas present from my dad in order to uh, basically keep the mosquitoes off of me and allow me to stop and rest. All right, there's a Fitchburg, like a registration uh, informational kiosk here. If you use your bikes and uh, stuff like that on the trail, you have to register, you have to pay to use it. And this is also not gonna be a very good hike because I'm walking right next to Highway 18 Hopefully the traffic noise won't be too bad. Check that out guys. The Capital Off-Road Pathfinders. Now what they do is they actually build like mountain bike trails for those that want to do mountain biking. They're not just flat trails. You know, there's lots of undulations and stuff like that. I mean, you're not doing mountain biking here, but it is more of a, a rugged terrain for those that want to do that kind of thing. You know, the highway noise isn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be, primarily because of all this vegetation. If it was early spring or late fall when all this is down, you're going to see the highway and you're going to hear everything. Okay guys, I was walking along and saw this little sign right here. 
So somewhere down this path there must have like pit toilets or something. I have no idea what's down there. So yeah guys, this is a nice little arched up uh, uh, rail bridge here. I actually thought there was going to be water under here, but it's actually a road. Oh, and I see the uh, place where the uh, that other trail that went to that bathroom comes out. I actually saw a runner come off of that trail down there. So this is the overlook on the bridge. And way down here, that is the trail that would, uh, if we would have taken it to that bathroom, would come out out here. <laughs> Okay guys, so this, uh, this sign here is actually Uranus. <laughs> what they've done is they've placed markers using the state capital as the sun. So we are as far out as Uranus. Um, I don't know what kind of scale they used here or anything like that. But yeah, that's kind of cool that they put out markers here. Um, they've also got them for the other planets too. We just happened to go past Uranus. <laughs> okay guys, just beyond the trees there, as you can see, uh, all the blue water, that is Goose Lake. Now that's one of the lakes that had uh, developed up um, when they started uh, developing all the lands on the other side, building up the highway here. So that is kind of sort of a man-made lake in that that used to be all marsh, but now they forced all the water into one area, making it a lake. Okay guys, I'm sitting here, I was taking pictures of these uh, fallen trees and stuff. And I look down and I'm seeing ripples all over the water down in through here. And I'm seeing just a ton of fish around all the deadfall that's down there. I don't know if my camera's gonna be able to pick them up swimming, but you can definitely see the ripples. <laughs> oh, the lake over here, I don't think this is Goose Lake anymore. I think that's actually a separate lake. And uh, a quick Google look didn't give me the name of the lake. So I have no idea what the name of this lake is. Man, traffic has gotten really loud because, well, there's nothing on this side of me to block the noise. Oh, okay guys, going under uh, Highway 18. And that means I'm getting into Verona. I know um, this road next to me here, they've seen cars on. If it keeps going, if you keep going and following that road, you'll end up in some fast food restaurants. There's a Taco Bell and Arby's, stuff like that up there. But the way the trail's going, I don't know if we're actually going to go up to those fast food restaurants because we're kind of curving around. I'm sure there's probably access trails to take you over there if you need to. All right, guys, so I made a, uh, a turn at one of the intersections. Uh, it was the intersection for an Ice Age trail. I think this is part of the Verona segment or something like that. I think I saw a sign back there that said something about the uh, junction and I don't know if, what that means. I don't know if there's a segment called junction or not, but the reason I came this way is because I told you up here are a bunch of the uh, restaurants and stuff and I am going to go up there and see about using a restroom. Nice little bathroom break at the uh, Festival Foods here in Verona. 
So now I'm going to backtrack on the uh, Ice Age Trail and go back down to um, the Military Ridge Trail. Yeah. Goose. <laughs> All right, here we are back on the military trail and it does turn to dirt here or gravel, whatever you want to call it. All right, nice bridge here. Some new wood down on the bridge too. Nice little creek. I have no idea what creek it is. All right, let's keep moving. I'm going to stop pretty soon and uh, have a snack though. We'll get some more sunscreen on. It is a sunny day. Well, damn it guys, just on the other side of those trees, is a parking lot so I could have just turned here mile marker three there's my mile marker three and I don't know exactly where they started started counting that mile marker at I could have gone through and up this little trail here through the parking lot and up to the festival foods from there instead of using the uh, the Ice Age trail speaking of which where the trail comes out of the uh, driveway or the parking lot up here comes down and keeps going that way that is an ice age trail so if i was uh, using the ice age trail i would uh turn and go that way but i'm not doing that today Okay guys, I came off the trail just right down there. Um, saw a sign over there that said that there are bathrooms. So it's like, oh, I'll come up and take a look. And yeah, it's a big, huge park up here. And uh, so we got bathrooms here, but look at that big old pavilion there. I'm just gonna go over there, sit down, have a little lunch. Feels good to get that pack off for a little while. Oh, back's getting a little stiff. But I'm getting a little hungry. So. I packed most of my uh, cooking gear in this lower pouch. There's my food. There's a cook pot. Here's another cook pot. And here is my my gas stove, or my gas for the stove. And this one here, oh, they're both full. I filled up my waters at the uh, uh, festival foods. There is something special that I want to show you for this lunch. Actually, there's a couple. One of the things you actually saw if you watched my um, my last motorcycle video where I went out camping by myself up in uh, Richland Center, um, little uh, park up there called um, Pier Natural Beer Bridge Park, or some people just call it Pier Park, and some people call it Natural Bridge Park. So it's whatever you want to call it, I guess. But if you saw that video, then you've seen this. This is a gauze pad, okay? It's metal mesh, and then it's got a ceramic gauze coating in the middle. And what that is for, um, usually uh, scientists use these to, um, you know, when they have like a Bunsen burner and they have a, a flask or, you know, some sort of little tubes or, you know, something sitting on or over that Bunsen burner, but they don't want the direct flame on the uh, container, you know, whatever it is. So they'll use this as an insulator and that's what I'm going to use it for as well to help kind of disperse out the heat from the flames, not from technically this, because this is kind of wide. So if I was to put my pot on there, yeah, it does get a little hot in the middle, but not bad, okay? Just basically because the uh, burner element is so much larger. But if I were to use this, this is my MSR pocket rocket. If I were to use this, the element is a little smaller and the flame that comes out of it is very intense. 
So that's more of why I've got this, so I can put that over it and it will help disperse out the heat from that small little jet engine flame. But the thing that I also want to show you guys, the other thing that's new is this little piece right here. What this is, it will adapt a one pound propane bottle to be used with a, a butane style burner. Cool, huh? Now, I don't like using those little tiny butane canisters. They're not refillable. You've got to throw them away and that just adds to the pollution and, and material in landfills, okay? And you don't need to, okay? This is refillable. I can refill this. I've got an adapter that I can put on my 20 pound tank at home. Just screw it on. Yeah, basically tip it up so the propane flows into here, the liquid propane. And then, yeah, so then you can use it. But this just screws on just like this. Okay, I'm gonna put it in my base here so I, it's nice and sturdy. So, got my canister on my base now. It looks fairly level. Take my stove and screw that on. There we go. My stove is ready to go, but my uh, my pot isn't, my food. <laughs> my food's not ready yet though. All right, so what do we have today for lunch? We have Knorr's, Alfredo, and a can of chunky chicken. And it's got the pull top, so I don't need to have a can opener. Now I do have my aluminum foil to use as a heat shield if I need it. It is a little breezy today, but under this uh, structure, I don't think I'm going to need to. The wind really isn't howling through here. So what do I need to do? I need, oh man, this says I'm supposed to have uh, some milk and I don't have any. So I'm just going to use water. I'm not going to use milk. So it's probably not going to be as creamy, but uh, I think it'll be all right. So basically, I'm just going to do uh, two cups of water. That sounds good. All right, so that's 16, 16 ounces that is. Put it in my pot. Put that up on top of my stove. Oh, with my gauze pad, forget that. I haven't had it very long, so it's easy for me to forget it. I'll put my lid on. There we go. Alfredo packet says I need to bring that water up to a boil first, and then I'll add the contents of the packet. If you guys saw my, my motorcycle solo camp video, <laughs> this is what happens when you don't put your heat shield on properly. It will melt your control knob for your burner. <laughs> Luckily for me, this has a, like a little metal thing. But yeah, this little plastic thing melted because it was actually tucked inside instead of being by the opened end. So it was getting a lot of heat and yeah, it just melted. It still works, it's still good. But <laughs> I had to uh, fight to get my, uh, my stove turned off. just because I didn't have pliers or anything to actually turn it with. All right, I'm gonna take my chunky chicken here, pop that open. I'm actually gonna take it over there and drain it off in the uh, grass. So the buildings over there are the assessor, but I'm actually in the Hometown USA Festival Park. What's nice about this place is that there's a garbage cans all you know around the building so once I'm done eating I can just toss my trash I don't have to lug that stuff around anymore I like that idea
All right, now it says I need to get this up to a boil and boil for the next seven minutes. So what have you guys been up to over the past week or so? Um, things start, started out kind of bad for us at the house, but uh, by the end of uh, by the end of the week and the start of the new week, um, things started getting a little bit better. So, so everything around my house is just hunky dory. So yeah, the other things that going on um, with the 750 project build that I've got going, um, I still have not heard from the state on the titling. So. Yeah, I don't know. You know, right now my options are, you know, if I don't get the title, I have to part the bike out and sell it piece by piece, and I'll buy something else and and have it as a project. Um, otherwise, hopefully here in the next few weeks, I'm hoping I'll get the title and everything will be fine and dandy, and I'll continue to work on the bike because right now I just don't want to be dumping in you know hundreds of dollars into it getting parts and pieces and and upgrade this and that if I can't ride the bike you know what I mean so yeah I'm just waiting on the state to tell me whether or not I'm going to be able to title the bike now one thing that you got to be careful of is that when you turn that gas off don't go pulling off that screen because it's going to be hot, okay? That is metal, okay? But as you can see, the stove operates perfectly on a, on a propane bottle. You know, it does not have to be a butane bottle. And that little adapter, I think you can get them for, well, as expensive as $30, and as cheap as, I think, like five or six. I'm going to leave the lid off. I want some of that uh, moisture to evaporate and kind of help thicken it up. Being I don't have milk in there, it's not going to be as creamy. So we'll just see if we can kind of reduce the liquid down a little bit. Boiling away. Going real good. I'm not feeling anything sticking on the bottom of it. You know, if I didn't have that gauze pad on there, it'd be sticking because that little tiny flame is just hitting the center of the pot and just wanting to burn everything and I'm not getting that at all. But a few more minutes and then I think it'll be ready. I will say that that is done. I'm going to use the lid as a insulational bowl to put that on. Oh yeah. Look at that guys. Look at that. That looks good. Alfredo with no milk or butter to make it creamy. <laughs> Still tastes fine. Lots of chicken in there, of course. I use a bigger can. I use a 12.5 ounce can of chicken. So there's a lot of chicken in here. All right, guys, I'm going to just sit here and eat, and uh, I don't think you want to see that. It can get kind of gross sometimes. <laughs> so I'll see you after I have my lunch. Okay, guys, just getting myself cleaned up from having lunch here. Got some uh, little, like, baby wipes, wet wipes, whatever you want to call them. And this is how I do my dishes. You've seen me do this before on other hiking uh, videos, and it's not perfect it's not great it's not anything but it's good enough to get me home where I can do the dishes properly you know if I let these things sit yeah there might be something that grows on it you never know but it's good enough to get me home get everything packed away so did my spoon and fork. Time to do my paint, my uh, my cook pot here. All right. See, look how clean that is. <laughs> clean as a baby's behind. <laughs> Get it? 
I made a little bit of a uh, peach mango drink, something that's a little different tasting than just plain water. And for dessert, I got a bunch of different types of kind bars. Let's see what I grabbed. I grabbed a uh, raspberry cashew tortilla bar. So this will be a nice little dessert. Add a little sugar to uh, my meal. I do like this GSI cook set because I can just take the parts I need. You know, for this trip, I knew I was only going to have the one meal, so I only brought one pot. I knew exactly what I was going to cook. So yeah, everything just... There's a bigger pot, a bigger lid, and a fry pan that go along with the system. But if I don't need it, why bring it, right? After I was done eating, I quickly applied some more sunscreen. So if you see white on my face, that's why. I also brought some bug spray, but it seems like the uh, wind is actually keeping the bugs down. It hasn't really been an issue today. So I came out of that little shelter and I looked up and yeah, it's pretty cloudy up there now. Look at all that. So I might end up losing my uh, sunglasses here in a bit. Uh, we're not supposed to get rain today, but man, those clouds are moving in quick. Oh, look at the little bunny rabbit. Look at the cute little bunny. Gonna run across Highway 69 here. Just because there's a funeral procession coming. <laughs> but uh, that way down Highway 69, is a, a gas station. So if you need a bathroom, you know, if the ones at the uh, park weren't open, there is a, uh, a gas station at the corner over there. Huh, what's this? I mean, it's obviously a bench, but I'm talking the, the red box. It's a sharing library. So you can come in, you can take a book, leave a book. I'm kind of curious. I'm getting a little more to the outskirts of Verona. Now, this is where you really have to assess yourself, you know, because there's like nothing between here and Mount Horb. I mean, there is a few things, but not much. So, if I can't make it to Mount Horb, there is a road crossing, and I think it's County J. And I will reassess myself there, and that will put me right around the 10 mile mark, which is normal. I can usually do 10 miles, but uh, I uh, bit off a big chunk today trying to do 17 miles. So let's see how it goes. It's already coming up on one o'clock, and I've done well, according to the uh, signage that they have along the trail. According to that, I've only done four miles. So do I have enough to do another 13 miles? <laughs> I don't know. This is an interesting looking bridge. This one actually has a number on it. Number 41. I think that's the first number I've seen. A little creek down there. It goes off that direction. Now, I did just see a, a sign that said machinery crossing. So I wonder if that's just up here going under this overpass. Yeah, this is definitely the uh, spot for the machinery crossing. You can see how they go down into the ditch over here, they can go down on the ditch over here. You know, I really thought that, sorry for the wind. I really thought that once we, uh, got west of Verona that the trail traffic would decrease. That's not true at all. I tell you, I have no idea what that big building is there. I don't know if it's a new school or whatever, but they've got like 
couple of football fields slash soccer fields. And then on this side of the trail, they got a baseball field there. There's another one or two farther down. So I don't know if this is supposed to be like a school that has a really strong athletic program or if it's some sort of athletic um, sports club type thing. I really don't know. I have no idea what that is. It's still under construction. So yeah, interesting. Um, you're hearing a little more traffic noise <laughs> if you can hear it through the wind. But uh, I'm coming up on 151. I'm gonna go underneath that and then a little farther down the trail, I'll actually cross under 18. Again. <laughs> All right, here's the bridge and tunnel for going under uh, Highway 151. It's a good size span because uh, it's a four-lane divided highway. Hmm, that doesn't look good, does it? That's a lot of water right there. I have no idea how deep it is. I do see a drain there on the ground. Oh boy. I don't know guys, this might be the end of my, uh, my hike. Yeah, that's deep. I suppose my other choice would be to uh, just go over here, take my socks and shoes off, wade through it, right? That sounds like a plan. I can do that. It might actually kind of feel refreshing on the feet. <laughs> I have to admit though, walking through that water was pretty cool uh, and pretty cold. <laughs> so it felt good and bad at the same time. I'm getting that big blister forming on the bottom of my foot again, I think. I think I got it going on this one, too. I don't know. I can All I can think of is it's the shoes. You know, there have been times where I've done 15 miles in a day and I don't get blisters. But after I got these shoes, I've been getting them all the time. And the shoes are falling apart already. I've only had these things for like eight months. The tread is really good on them. But the, uh, the inside, it's all tearing apart. The materials are, are breaking apart. Um, even some of the outside stuff. I got a big thing right here on the side of my shoe where the stitching's broke. So. So I might be looking at getting some new shoes here pretty soon already. I got these a few months before Jen and I went to New Zealand. And uh, you know, we did some fair amount of walking in New Zealand. Not, nothing major, you know, maybe a few miles a day. But then when I got back home and started uh, hiking and stuff and I did that multi-day thing with Dave and yeah this these shoes just have not been working well they're a uh, Skechers brand and uh, they feel comfortable when I put them on but yeah if I just spend any amount of time on my feet they just start hurting 
Right now, I'm feeling okay. My legs are getting a little stiff and sore. But truthfully, I haven't stopped much. You know, I stopped now to get my shoes back on. I stopped for lunch. And I've stopped to take some water. And that's about it. I really haven't just stopped and took a break except for lunchtime. So while I'm sitting here, I'm going to take a little break. I'm going to drink down some water and uh, give my feet a little time to rest. Um, if you're wondering on my location, I am just beyond the um, uh, Epic campus in Verona. Um, Epic is literally right over the mound that's behind the camera. But now it's going to be pretty much all country. I'm going to get away from the highway, so no more highway noise. So check this out, guys. <laughs> I've reached Neptune. <laughs> I'm actually looking at this little map that they got on here now. So I was there for Uranus. I got here for Neptune. The next one is Pluto, and it is actually way out in Mount Horeb. Maybe I'll get to it today. I don't know. But yep, reach Neptune. Cool. <laughs> So yeah, this section has actually been really nice. Especially once you get away from uh, 18. God, the traffic noise is just, just loud and obnoxious. But now I'm out here, out in the country. I got wetlands all around me, so it's pretty, pretty barren and sparse. A few tall trees every once in a while. Yeah, if you were to come out here on a hot summer day and do this, you better be prepared with a lot of water and a lot of sunscreen because there's not a whole lot of shade out here. I'm lucky today with all this heavy cloud cover that I've got. So <laughs> I'm lucky in that aspect, I really am. Um, I was actually surprised too. The trail is still pretty well used out here. I'm constantly getting passed by bikers and stuff, constantly. In fact, I got more coming towards me now. All right, see you farther up ahead. There's some nice, beautiful horses out here. Very nice. I actually did see a couple of people riding horses, but they were up in the into the trees and stuff like that i wouldn't have been able to get a good shot of them yeah there's basically a big huge horse farm right here i've seen other horses across the fields over by those trees and stuff over there i'm probably seeing probably 15 to 20 horses total i'm coming up on a road crossing here and it's a fairly major road but for the life of me, I can't remember what it's called. So I'll have to put it in the video down here somewhere. <laughs> but after I cross this one, there's another road I cross. And then I get into the small little town of Riley. And that should be about 10 mile mark. I mean, there's beautiful country over here. Um, I took a few pictures of some farms and stuff. Okay, here I am at mile marker eight that's my mile marker eight right over there so yeah i took some pictures of some farms and stuff like that they look kind of cool you know i like the big old barns and stuff but for the most part i've been just crossing marshland really yeah i mean i haven't even really seen fields nothing's really tilled up or anything so all right, so I'll see you farther down the trail.
All right, guys, that road back there, if you can make it out anymore, <laughs> that is Paulson Road. That is the last road I'm going to cross until I get to County J in the little town of Riley. And I know what you're all thinking. How are you gonna get back to your truck? You're exhausted. You're right. <laughs> Jen is not coming to pick me up. I am going to call for an Uber. I should be close enough to Madison to uh, get a rider or a driver from out there to come all the way here and pick me up. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. <laughs> Finally, they gave me a bench. I haven't seen one for like five miles. Oh, now I'm almost to my destination. <laughs> oh, holy hell, guys, look at that. I think I'm coming into Riley. Yeehaw. All right, guys. I made it to the uh, the little uh, parking lot here for this uh, trailhead for the section of the uh, military ridge. Sorry, I'm like really exhausted. I'm tired. Got my Uber ordered, and it's going to be here in about 10-15 minutes. You know, truthfully, if I had started maybe three hours earlier than I did, you know, get up here at 6 a.m. instead of 9. I would have had more time to walk during the day. Which means that I, this rest here that I'm doing, I could have sat here for a good hour and then continue on to Mount Horeb and still had plenty of daylight. But all in all, I had a good day. I had a really good day. My feet do hurt. Now I'm starting to think it's more of the shoes. You know, when I've done long hikes before, I've had cotton socks on. Changed out my cotton socks for synthetic. And, you know, my feet still hurt. So, yeah. I gotta look at getting better hiking boots. Okay, maybe I'll go some lighter weight. It doesn't have to be waterproof or anything. Actually, the only reason I got these waterproof is because when we went to New Zealand, it was kind of the rainy season, and I thought for sure that would be walking around in puddles and stuff. So yeah, I'll get something lighter weight, but more durable. Well, yeah, this is Mark sitting here on a bench eating a kind bar saying so thanks again for watching i hope you guys enjoyed the little adventure we had on this trail i do plan on finishing the trail at some point it'll probably be a couple more episodes but i'll get to it see you on the road